I thought I should start, take a few minutes before I hand over the floor to the groups that are presenting and um, walk you through what we've been doing in this course very briefly. So here's my little spiel. This course is really a green design course for civil engineering students. And it is um, to provide the engineers with an enhanced skill set so that they could meaningfully interact with architects and urban planners. And it's an opportunity for the civil engineers in this room to um, put on their creative hat and be creative in the design of attractive, visually stimulating, sustainable urban environments. And we touched upon several subdisciplines of civil engineering, but also urban planning and um, some urban environmental sciences a little bit towards the end. And a major component of this course has been the design project. And a lot of the learning happens through the design of a city of your choice. And it's, that's the innovative aspect of this course. And that design challenge and working around that challenge to create sustainable cities has been the innovative integration of your skills as you went through the design process. So to showcase some of the design aspects, the purpose of the objective of this design project was to design a city of your choice by 2050. And it was an iterative design process. So it was designed in part. And we went through together through a review of sustainable urban series, we went through uh, a review of the actual sustainable plans and infrastructure plans in the city and the different sectors in the built environment. And historically throughout this course, students got to design St. George campus, or they got to design the city of Toronto or the GTA. So for the first time this year, what we thought we would do and be a little bit more innovative to give you a chance to pick a city of your choice and we were spread around the globe and get you to explore the city so you become the expert in the design of these cities by looking at them today and then forecasting them out to 2050. So that was our design target. We pulled all the numbers together, we pulled all the data that we could find together and created our own greenhouse gas inventory for 2050 and also developed the urban metabolism diagram showing the flows of materials through the city Hopefully, greenhouse gas emissions have gone down, and the material flows in the urban metabolism have also been reduced. And, and we also got to reflect a little bit on the sustainable development goals, which have replaced the millennium development goals. And for the first time, we now have a goal specifically for cities and uh, sustainable cities and communities that speaks to, uh, and the, and the uh, quote unquote, to make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. Okay. So uh, the TAs have been involved, and both the TAs and all the students and all the groups have done a wonderful job in getting up to this point today. And remember, you were asked to try to see existing plans in cities and improve upon them. So if cities had plans for their climate targets for 2020, you went beyond that and you pulled it up to 2050. You were asked to be as creative as possible, critical of what you read versus what you could do, analytical and practical. Practical and reasonable and both difficult to define. Luckily, cost was not an issue and was not a factor in this course, but as much as reasonably and as feasibly possible, bearing in mind the understanding of the context to which all these innovations and technologies were applied to your city. And above all, the most important thing we have to remember, as exciting as it is, it's still an engineering design course, and we have to be as quantitative as possible so that we can justify our arguments and our claims using numbers. So we learned a lot about cities. We learned a lot more about Toronto because the examples I presented were from different neighborhoods in Toronto, but also across the GTA, where we reflect on what we can see right here at home, but then apply it and apply the knowledge, not necessarily the same technologies, to other cities. Cold climate versus hot, et cetera. These are the differences that you were um, cognizant of as you designed it. We also learned a lot of go about global cities. So across the, across the globe, there were best practices that we pulled from Europe, 
Southeast Asia, Vancouver, British Columbia. So we learned a thing or two about global cities as well. But then a lot of the learning happened through the design of your individual cities and the peer-to-peer -peer learning that happened while you learned about other cities throughout the course. So we have a good set of cities. And here's where we're at today. Um, we have eight cities. And in order of presentation, we have Cape Town, Dar, Dar Salaam, Rio, Taipei, Denver, Sydney, Dublin, and Kuala Lumpur. So this is none of my doing, but we were randomly spread across the globe, which is a good representation of the differences among the cities. So I'll stop right here, and I'll pass it on to the experts.